uh, today we've got uh, Pastor Catherine Crosby Wright. She's going to come and bring the word. And uh, we've known each other for many years now. And uh, I think we met basically on missions trips to Uganda and got to know each other through that. So I'm going to ask Catherine to come up and bring the word. So if there was a whole crowd here, but I know you're at home, you want to give her a clap of encouragement, that'd be really good. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Oh, it's so good to be here. I love being with this church and this people and to meet with you via, uh, what is it, YouTube. So uh, greetings to you wherever you are in your homes watching and I just want to pray for you right now before I start. We've been in very difficult times and I know some of you are, uh, are reaching out to God for answers to prayer. So Father, I just pray now that your Holy Spirit Lord, will be with us this day and will minister to those watching this program. I thank you, Father, that your Holy Spirit is our comforter. And Lord, we draw our strength from you. We thank you, Father God, that your word says you'll never leave us or forsake us. I thank you, Father, that you're healing people right now. Father, you're causing their spirits to, to come alive this day in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray that the words that I speak, Lord, will, will touch something in the spirit realm, Father, that there'll be a, a frequency in the spirit that will capture the attention of those listening today in Jesus' name. Amen. So God bless you. And it's so good to be. It's the third, what date is it? The 4th of May, isn't it? I prepared the message on the 30th of April and I'm just looking at it, but you know, the Lord told me to title it The Divine Knock. And I thought, well, that, that seems right to me because everything that the Holy Spirit has been showing me is that God is wanting to get our attention, The Divine Knock. And he wants us to become God conscious. He wants us to be in this, to take this time to be a time of preparation and it is to prepare us, to prepare the church for the hour is now at hand. And it is a time that God is causing his people to arise because we're coming to the greatest climax for the church in its history. In these last days, there's going to be a great and powerful move of the Holy Spirit, a great awakening before he's coming. So it's exciting exciting times and I know where you are and the difficulties that you're going through it's hard sometimes to see that to have that great hope of what God is doing but I hope that by the end of this that you will awaken to what the spirit is saying I'm taking a scripture from my favorite book and it's the song of Solomon's and it's uh, verse 5 uh, chapter 5 verse 2 and it's about the bride and the Shulamite woman. And I often just dip into this. It's like my honey pot. And the Lord speaks to me in so many ways through this book. But it's about the Shulamite woman who was waiting for the bride, the bridegroom. And actually it's a picture of the church and it's a picture of you and I in our walk with Christ. And she says this. She says, I sleep. But my heart is awake. And then she says, it is the voice of my beloved. He's knocking, saying, open for me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. He's knocking at her door and he's saying, open up the door. And I'm saying, can you hear God knocking on the door of your heart today? It's very interesting but the seven churches in the book of revelation uh, talk about those people who have an ear to hear to hear what the spirit is saying and even though the churches are prof a prophetic picture of the church uh, at this age the final church is the church of Laodicea and in all of these messages to the churches the holy spirit gives a, um, a recommendation or a commendation um, and particular promises. 
And he says to the church at Laodicea, this is a church that is lukewarm, and he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and he's knocking because they haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to move in their midst. And even today, there are many churches that haven't, not like this church, but many churches that haven't allowed the Holy Spirit in to move in their midst. And he says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I'll come in and I'll dine with him and he with me. And to him who overcomes, and I want you to catch those words, to he who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. And that's a message to everyone in the church. He says, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. So I'm saying that there is a heavenly knocking taking place to the church and to individuals. Now the interesting thing is that this Shulamite woman, you think that she would run out. Here's the beloved knocking at the door, but she doesn't. She says, oh, my head is covered with dew and, and my locks with the drops of the night. And she says this. She says, I've taken off my robe. How can I put it on again? You know, she's already got ready for bed. She's already settled in. She's very comfortable. And although he's knocking, she's got this excuse. Well, I'm tired, but he's saying, come on, come on, respond to the knocking on my door. You know, how can we put it on again? How can we rise up again? Well, this is what God is calling us to do at this time. So some of you I know have grown weary, but God is very faithful. And some of you are, are disappointed, I know. And some of you feel that God has forsaken you, given up. Maybe you've lost your passion, even your fire. But everything that has happened now with the coronavirus and its impact on you and your family is causing you to sort of settle back and say, well, I don't know where God is in this hour. And you're saying, I've washed my feet. How can I defile them again? But he said, the next one he, is, my beloved then put his hand by the latch of the door and my heart yearned for him. I rose to open for my beloved. On the handles of the lock, I opened up for my beloved, but my beloved was gone and was turned away. I believe God is knocking at this time like no other to get our attention. His knocking is very loud and clear. There's a challenge. Everything is responding at this time to the knocking of the Holy Spirit. You can see signs everywhere. There's a, there's a global awakening. You can see leaders in countries are, are seeking God at this hour. People are praying in the streets. They're crying out for answers that only come from God because the leaders have lost their way. And there is this global awakening and the church is is rising up to become the church unusual. The times are different. We are entering in, into a new time. It is a return to righteousness. We can see this. People are, are valuing the things, the simple things of life. They're now coming back to the core root of who they are and, and what they're called to be and to value each other in the community. There are signs of his coming everywhere. I can see butterflies in my garden. I haven't seen them for 30 years, but I'm seeing butterflies, new life. There are clear waters in the seas, in the canals of Venice. Nature is awakening. There are clear skies. You can begin to see from parts in India, the Himalayas again. And we can see endangered species finding solace in the quiet of man's lockdown, and they're renewing and replenishing themselves on the shores and even in the seas. Nature is responding. Romans 8, 19 says, for the earnest expectation of the creation 
eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself will also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So we know that creation is in birth pains and his knock is here awakening us to this hope that everything will come into God's divine order. So I believe that God is preparing us for this great climax in history and there's a new frequency at this hour. I had two significant dreams. Um, it was very interesting, but just recently God awoke me for a whole week at one o'clock in the morning and three o'clock, and I would be awake praying until dawn for a whole week, and, uh, and then it sort of stopped. I was wide awake and just had to seek God. I want to share a couple of those dreams because I think that they're significant for the time that we're in. One was on the 11th of November, 11th of, not November, 11th of April. And 11 is the number of transition. And uh, if you look at Deuteronomy 11:11, 11, 11, it says, but the land you are crossing the Jordan to take possession is a land of mountains and valleys that drink rain from heaven. So my dream was of repossessing land. And the, the dream was that this land that I had owned had been mortgaged to 44 people, which is interesting because that's four times 11. And God showed me that it would be redeemed by four of them. And I couldn't help but think, four, what's the significance of four and the 11 times four? And my mind go, has gone to the four craftsmen in Zechariah who came to cast out the horns that lifted, up their, uh, that lifted up their horns against the land of Israel and God's chosen people. So I believe at this time that the four represents the apostolic anointing that's going to rise up in the nations around the world. And I believe that this is going to be such a spiritual force, a place where men who are mature in the things of God that carry this apostolic anointing, men and women are going to dismantle the horns of power over nations. There's going to be a rising up and recognizing this, this uh, warfare that we're in and this apostolic anointing is going to shift the things in the heaven. 2 Corinthians 2, 12 says, Truly the signs of an apostle were accomplished among you with the perseverance in signs and wonders. So I believe that God is going to use such men and women as instruments of his power to pursue and overtake in these last days. And there'll be a global rising of taking back what the enemy has stolen. That's God's law. That's for politics, economics, family. There's going to be a reversing of these things. And there will be national transformation. Leaders have no answer for the crisis we face. But those who know their God will be sought after like they sought after King Solomon for his wisdom and knowledge in those times. The word says that those who know their God will do great exploits. They will execute the judgments of God on those people and institutions and powers that seek to destroy God's people and change the laws. Now, I hope you're still with me because <laughs> it's, it's something to, to preach to an empty church and on YouTube, but I really believe that this is a word for the hour. Another night that I woke up, and I scrawled this on paper and, and read it the next day. There were seven things that God gave me on the 21st of April. Seven things that he was doing. He said he's bringing the people to repentance, the church to repentance. He's bringing them into a place of rest in the knowledge of what God has already done. He's resetting. The world is on reset, coming back 
and the church to the original purpose that God called the church for. We're coming back to the, the basics. We're going to the other word was recalibrate. We're aligning with heavens. The word thy kingdom come, they will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the other one was replenish. And God says that I will satisfy the weary and every languishing soul. I will replenish. God is going to replenish you at this hour. He's going to replenish the church at this hour. And the other one was renewal. And it is a time of renewal. It's a time for you to regain your strength. The word of Isaiah says in 40, but those who hope, in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar like wings, like eagles' wings. They will run and not grow weary. Can you believe that? They will walk and not faint. And that is a word for you today. Amen. So this, the word that I have been getting is what the word is the same word that God is speaking to his prophets across the nations. Now, there's one significant prophet, and I'd like to bring you part of his word, and uh, it's brought by Dr. Jonathan David, and I can uh, share the full um, word with your pastor later uh, if he would like to share it with you. But this is the part of the word that Dr. Jonathan David said. He said, something sovereign is about to break forth, initiating a new beginning of a new move of God on this earth. God said the season will start from the Feast of Passover, that's at the end of May, to a month after the Feast of Tabernacles. Now this is a new season beginning and will start from the Feast of Passover to a month after the Feast of Tabernacles. This locked-in period is the Kairos time for a God encounter. This is what I'm saying. God is knocking at the door and he wants us to awaken to what he's doing. So this period of time from Passover to a month after the Feast of Tabernacles is a time to, to know that God is going to open up the heavens and touch your lives in a magnificent way. There will be seven months of supernatural and divine activities in the heavens. Divine activity will be unveiled because God wants us to be aligned to what he is doing in the heavens so that we can be aligned and adjusted. There will be an awakening, awareness, and God consciousness. There will be a great sense of expectation and faith will increase. There'll be strong prophetic release, an active and deep passion to move towards corporate destiny. And during this season, we'll see God's intervention in our nations. There'll be an increase of his government, first in the restructuring of his house, then in the community and the nation. And that's the word that uh, he's brought for us. So I, I really encourage you from the day of Pentecost to a month after, to use that time as a kairos time for God to seek God. You know, the Feast of Passover uh, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Feast of First Fruits, they speak of what happened at the cross, the, the perfect sacrifice of Christ and his resurrection and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit on the Feast of Passover. Those three feasts have already been fulfilled in Christ. And what's exciting is that the next three, we're on the threshold of the next three feasts to be fulfilled. And they are, that is, with the, the church age is, will come to a close at that period. And I think I mentioned you before, we, we know that the church age began when the Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost. That was the birthing of the church. But the church age doesn't last forever. If you look in Daniel 9, I think it is, it's between the 69th and the 70th week. And the, 
that time for the church age is coming to an end. It's coming to a close. So God is going to move powerfully for those who are waiting him, who are responding to the knocking. He will pour out his spirit in these last days because we're going to see a great revival, a great awakening. We're going to see great signs and wonders on the earth like never before. There's going to be an elevation and an acceleration of the things of God of this hour. And so God is cause, calling us now to operate under this open heaven. And that is bringing to earth that which is in heaven, declaring that which is in heaven on earth. So we are here to complete the work that Jesus began. And there's going to be no limitation, no fear. If you fear, you come back into the spirit of bondage. But God has called us not to fear. He set us free and given us a spirit of liberty. So when you fear, you fear the things that you expect might happen. You fear those things. The, the things you fear, the Bible says, will come upon you. So the thing is, when you fear, you come into a spirit of slavery and God has set you free from that. So don't go into fear. See what God is doing. Listen to the, the word of what he's doing at this hour. So the Feast of Trumpets is the next feast that has not yet been filled. There are three more to be fulfilled. You can do a study yourself on this. And that is the end of the church age. That points to the rapture of the church when the bridegroom comes for the bride. And that's why he's knocking. This is the voice of the bridegroom calling his bride to sweet intimacy to, to awake passion within the bride for the bridegroom. These are the things that God is doing by his spirit in this hour. So it's not a time to be disheartened. It's not a time to lose faith in God. It's a time to stir up. I challenge you to stir up that gift that God has given you. I challenge you to stir up the gift of faith at this hour because it's only the things of faith that will have lasting value. It's only things that have been birthed out of faith which will have lasting value. So don't go to fear. I encourage you, go to faith. Always go to faith. That's where our hope is. Do you know in the Bible there are 365 times that God commands us to fear not? And that was when the great General Joshua went out to take the promised land and uh, to face untold enemies, God commanded him continually, be strong and be of good courage. So in these final days, God is calling you to come aside, and he's saying to you, fear not, but have faith in me. Have faith in my promises. Have faith in me. So I encourage you, there's such an a expectation that we have in the prophetic word at this hour. I encourage you to think seriously as you approach Pentecost, the birthing of the church, that in the book of Joel, Joel said that God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. And Peter said, this is that which was promised in the book of Joel. God is still pouring out his spirit in these last days for this great awakening. And he's calling his church to come back to original pattern, to come back and allow the Holy Spirit in to lead us and guide us. So have faith in God. Let your hope today be fixed on him. Amen? Don't fear. Rise up. Seek God. Pursue God. Be passionate in your desire for God. And he will meet you at this hour. He is working in your family. He is working in your life. And he is working behind the scenes in the nations, bringing everything into his divine order. 
for these last days. So God bless you. Be encouraged with the word this day. And I hope and pray that you'll seek God like never before as we approach Pentecost and to the month after that feast. Amen. God bless you.